Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Read the Right Thing. I'm your host, Eric. I'm really excited to talk about a book today. I'm talking about The Rise of Silas Lapham by William Dean Howells. I found this book at a used bookstore in Asheville, North Carolina, a really cool little town. And the spine of the book really just jumped out at me. I didn't really have anything I was looking for in particular. I like to just go into used bookstores and see what I can find. I never even heard of this book. When I read that it was set in Boston, I decided to buy it. Boston is one of my favorite cities, but I can't say I've read too many books set in Boston. Only a few Dennis Lehane books and maybe a few others. So in Asheville, I bought the paperback version of this book, and I've actually since given it away. But a few weeks later, I was in Washington, and I found this hardcover edition at a used bookstore like an hour or two north of Seattle, I think. I was driving from Seattle to Vancouver and decided to stop for a lunch. So I got some fish and chips, and then I wandered into a bookstore and found this used book for a dollar. I had already read the, the paperback, but I decided to buy this just because I thought it looked pretty cool. William Dean Howells, he's an American novelist, playwright, critic, essayist, reviewer, poet, and editor. In his time, he was a great influence of the growing middle-class readership. He was also known as the Dean of Letters. He had very little schooling growing up, but his father was a newspaper publisher, and William Dean Howells, he began writing for papers in his teenage years. Howells was a good friend and advisor to Mark Twain and Henry James. Howells critiqued literature for The Atlantic, and he was one of the first people to take Mark Twain seriously. Howells also wrote the biography for Abraham Lincoln, and with the money he earned from that book, he took a trip to New England. While on his trip to New England, he met prominent literary figures like Wendell Holmes, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and Nathaniel Hawthorne. And when Lincoln won the presidency, Lincoln appointed Howells as the U.S. Consul to Venice. Howells wrote travel letters while he lived abroad. He also sported a damn good mustache. Throughout his life, Howells promoted European authors like Ivan Turgenev, Benito Perez, Caldos, Leo Tolstoy, Henrik Ibsen, Emil Zola, George Eliot, and Thomas Hardy, most of which you will read if you major in English or if you just like authors of that time period. Howells also promoted African-American and women writers of his time. There are several novels by Howells. His other books sound very interesting. I've only read The Rise of Silas Lapin, The Rise of Silas Lapham, but I think I'm going to read some of his other books just because I like this one so much. The Rise of Silas Lapham, it's a realistic account of a self-made businessman who moves to Boston. Silas made his money in the paint business through luck, hard work, and a few shady business dealings. The novel was extremely popular when it was published in 1885. The novel and Howells also influence many authors after his time. The story, it's about a family adapting into a new social class. They're very much new money and still learning to maneuver through an upper class, aristocratic Boston society. There are dinner parties, dates, and business meetings. Silas tries to adapt to the social standards of his new money by arranging a marriage between his youngest daughter and the son of the Corey family. The Corey family, they're very much the old money, you know, aristocratic Boston family. The Rise of Silas Lapham is a realistic novel in that it represents the subject matter truthfully. Howells said on realism that it is nothing more and nothing less than a truthful treatment of material. He was a champion and advocate of realism. A lot of people even consider Howells to be the father of literary realism. All of Howells' novels were short, uncomplicated narratives about everyday people. The middle-class readership most likely flocked to his books because they were about them. That's probably why he was so popular to that middle-class readership. The characters in this book are relatable and seem like someone you would know. Silas Lapham is a character I think most would want to be. You know, a rich person, but they're self-made. The book utilizes two plots, a love story and a bankruptcy story. So Silas's arc follows the rags to riches, back to rags, and then back to riches. We meet Silas after he has already risen financially. But the rise in this story is more of a moral rise than a financial one. Everything Silas goes through while navigating his newfound success and riches while also losing his business are a test on his morals. His wife is also his moral compass and helps him become a better person and businessman. Now the love story between the younger sister and Tom Corey is a fascinating look at courtship in the 1800s. I found myself chuckling how Irene Lapham would 
would really hang on every word that Tom Corey said. As soon as the interaction was done and Tom left, Irene would analyze and dissect every part of the interaction with her older sister or her mom. The love story, it complicates in the end, almost tearing apart the Lapham family. It really was an interesting and funny look at how people entered into romantic relationships in that day. It was completely different than now. So this book is an interesting study of romance and courtship in the 1800s, while also being a, a study on business ethics and the difficulties of climbing social ladders. There's something for everyone in this book, I would say. Well, maybe not something for everyone, but if you like romance, I think you can enjoy this book. If you're not into romance and you like more business stuff, you could also like this book. But the romance, it doesn't hang over the book and get too sappy, nor does the business part get too technical. For the Lapham family, the difficult part isn't making the money, but adapting to a new social class and all the differences that come with the new group. So if you choose to read this book, you'll learn about the Gilded Age, social class differences, romance in the late 1800s, all with a post-Civil War America hanging over the narrative. America at the time of this setting, when the book took place, was just getting over the Civil War. Because of this, there is more context to everything that happens. America was still rebuilding from Civil War and trying to piece itself together. Similar to now, how we're all trying to recognize our similarities instead of our differences, I think it was the same way then. But recognizing similarities over differences is something easier said than done. I don't think the Laplums trying to blend into an aristocratic society is a metaphor for America, but just one example of people trying to feel a part of a group. Humans and Americans in general, we want to feel a part of something. Adapting to become a member of a group could be even harder amidst great division. For example, the Civil War. I found Howell's writing style to be very pleasant and enjoyable for being written so long ago. I still found it, the story and the characters relatable and funny. Silas is terrified of not fitting in with his social class. There is a hilarious part of the book where Silas is trying to determine if he should wear gloves or not to a dinner party. It's a relatable scene I think everyone's had to go to a party or a wedding of some sort some form of social gathering where you might be worried about what to wear. You think, do I wear the hat? Do I not wear the hat? Do I wear a tie? Do I not wear a tie? What about cufflinks? Oh no, I forgot a belt. People are going to look at me. Oh no, my belt doesn't match my shoes. Everyone's going to make fun of me. Howells uses a great word to describe Silas, and that word is a parvenu, or someone from an obscure origin who shows up with money. Now, the sisters remind me somewhat of the sisters from the movie 10 Things I Hate About You because they're just so different. They're almost polar opposites. The younger one is portrayed as more feminine and interested in romance, while the older one has personality and is easy to talk to and has unfairly been labeled as not the cute one, I guess. And that happens in real life, too. I think... Girls get labeled certain ways as the cute one or the smart one, where they're definitely way more complex than that. Some of my dislikes. Like I said, I found this book really enjoyable and funny and readable. But at the same time, it was written in the 1800s, so the language was just a little different. There were some words that I hadn't really come across before. So just keep your phone handy. Keep a dictionary handy. You know, I don't, I don't think it's off-putting. It's not necessarily a difficult read i think there may just be a few words you have to look up here and there but uh i'll read an example from the book at the beginning so this book starts off with silas lapham he's being interviewed by a newspaper writer when bartley hubbard went to interview silas lapham for the solid men of boston series which he undertook to finish up in the events after he placed their original projector on that newspaper lapham received him in his private office by previous appointment Walk right in, he called out to the journalist, whom he caught sight of through the door of the counting room. He did not rise from the desk at which he was writing, but he gave Bartley his left hand for welcome, and he rolled his large head in the direction of a vacant chair. Sit down, I'll be with you in just half a minute. Take your time, said Bartley, with the ease he instantly felt. I'm in no hurry. He took a notebook from his pocket, laid it on his knee, and began to sharpen a pencil. There, Lavin pounded with his great hairy fist on the envelope he had been addressing. William, he called out and he handed the letter to a boy who came to get it. I want that to go right away. Well, sir, he continued, wheeling round in his leather cushioned swivel chair and facing Barley, seated so near that their knees almost touched. 
So you want my life, death, and Christian sufferings, do you, young man? That's what I'm after, said Barley. Your money or your life? I guess you wouldn't want my life without the money, said Lapham, as if he were willing to prolong these moments of preparation. Take them both, Barley suggested. Don't want your money without your life if you come to that, but you're just one million times more interesting to the public than if you hadn't a dollar. And you know that as well as I do, Mr. Lapham. There's no use beating around the bush. So for me, this book was the right thing. I enjoyed the humor of the family dynamic, the look into business deals, and the social differences of the Laphams and the Corys. I can't wait to read more of William Dean Howells. So if you enjoy American realism of this time period, I would definitely recommend this book. I think this book is the right thing. So that was my review of The Rise of Silas Lapham by William Dean Howells. Have you read this book? Tell me what you thought. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like or a subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.